Hello, Reject Nation. I'm Greg Alba. Hello, Reject Nation. I'm John Humphrey. How's it going, y'all? I'm Andrew Turpening. <laughs> you seem very comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to mess up the Reject Nation I, thing, so I just uh, went I with totally what I totally understand. <laughs> I appreciate that very much, Mr. Turps. Andrew Turpening, friend of ours from Patreon, visiting from Texas. He's here with us today. You like Patreon? Yes, I do. Do you like walking between worlds, being a member of the Reject Nation, but now also being a reject? It's actually pretty fun and interesting because you, you see both sides of y'all. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's really boring on this side, isn't it? <laughs> totally. Yeah, totally. It's, it's like, I was as cool as I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah. Patreon was way better. <laughs> You're behind the curtain and it's mostly just foam to keep the sound from echoing. <laughs> yeah, that's all it is. We're going to check out from one of my favorite channels today. Uh, this this channel's awesome. If you don't subscribe to these guys, please do it. They're What Culture? Ten more truly terrible extras who ruin their scenes. I'm oh, telling you guys, these guys are hilarious Brits. We're going to do a patient of the day shout out for Kent McKnight. Kent. And we'll do it after, the, after we check out the video, but Kent, if you're watching, watch more. Kent <laughs> Magnus! Just, just watch the end. Watch the end. Hollywood has something of a problem with extras. These try-hard die-hards often crop up in our list doing huh. silly <laughs> over-the-top actions in order to make their 15 seconds of memorable. <laughs> like, check this guy out in the James Bond film, just sweep him in. <sighs> What a hero. What? So let's get on with another double digit list of these dispensable dopes. With this in mind, I'm Jules for WhatCulture.com and these are 10 more truly adults. terrible extras who ruined their scenes. Number 10. Not quite kicked in the chops. Return of the Jedi. What with the rather quick death of Boba Fett in the Sarlacc pit fight in Return of the Jedi, <laughs> notice another tragic passing. This extra, who despite not even being touched by Luke's boot, still decides to throw down his blaster and dive needlessly to his death. It's an oversell to ridiculous degrees. Like Number 9. Man. Must get on camera. Gladiator. Behold, the greatest creep in the history of movie extra work. Not content with being dropped into a background crowd, this man obviously decided that he had to get his face on camera no matter what. <laughs> although he's landed with a slight problem of being sat behind a pillar. No problem though, he simply leans into the shot without a care for the realism or immersion of the scene, mercifully stopping just short of Whoa. waving maniacally and shouting, Great. Mom. Number 8. Great Monkey Doesn't Commit. Planet of the Apes. In the original Planet of the Apes, Charlton Heston's George Taylor suffers the abuse of being pelted with stones by the apes, who seem to take great relish from his suffering and seem intent on making it even worse. Well, all but two of them anyway, because two of the extras under the heavy simian makeup obviously weren't happy with having to be lumbered with stoning duty that day. First you have this monkey visibly flinching at the baying mob instead of joining in, and then there's this one who throws a stone with such a lack of gusto that you suspect that she's not even into it at all. Number seven, the worst butcher, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Given the action going on in the fourth of this iconic Raider scene, it's very possible you didn't even see the extra giving butchers a bad name in the background. He is literally the worst butcher in the history of butchering, and all he's actually serving is a delicious slice of fresh air. Number six, Storm, not bothered mate, the day after tomorrow. One of the ah. things that the day after tomorrow does really well is to sell the terrifying doom of its megastorm that's so furious that millions Jake. of humans would die in seconds like ants under a foot. However, one of the extras cast in the film clearly didn't get the memo that he was supposed to be in any way scared by that notion. Even as everyone else is running and screaming towards Sanctuary, he simply stands, seemingly unbothered, waiting for a <laughs> and, and Vogue, Jurassic Park. Though his role was significantly cut from Jurassic Park, you're supposed to accept that Dodgson is a bad dude, right down to the fact that he apparently refuses to close car doors. This might have gone completely unnoticed were it not for the extra employee who plays his driver, who clearly decided his character would be put out by Dodgson making him close the door and channeled his inner diva to show his disdain, offering an angry flourish that is impossible to unsee. Number four, possibly the best actor in like it, that The one. Room. The Room is obviously notorious for Tommy Wiseau's incredibly unique approach to filmmaking and acting. The acting is stunted, the line delivery unintentionally uproarious, and the script nonsensical. It's a work of art only in the majesty of how much it gets wrong. But in amongst all that other garbage lies a genius so far unappreciated. A lady actor of such incredible skill that she doesn't even let the fact that she's been saddled with not having anyone to talk to in a party scene get her down. Remarkably, she plows on regardless and pretty much becomes by far the best actor in the wow. movie. Number Not three, bad. Punch Drunk Extra, Million Dollar Baby. There's something very romantic about boxing. It's a brutal, balletic art whose distilled drama lends itself perfectly to cinema, which is precisely why there are so many good boxing movies out there. 
And it seems like there's one extra in Million Dollar Baby who is so in love with her <laughs> that he went to every single punch like Swank was laced up and laying sweet <laughs> on his himself. Number two, never hire a Mon Calamari officer. Return of the Jedi. Of the Jedi. Star Wars has an extras problem. First, oh, there was oh, the yeah, infamous yeah, stormtrooper yeah, bumping too. his head moment, and now this. To give them their due, it's probably quite difficult for Mon Calamari to see properly, given how far apart their eyes are. And it's also probably extremely difficult for the actors within their rubber suits to see also. This might well explain why this bridge officer on Admiral Akbar's staff is so comically unable to navigate his way around his own control panel, momentarily losing the button he's obviously supposed to be pressing. And number one, the <laughs> Phantom Puncher, ah. the Dark Knight Rises. The Dark Knight Rises had some stunning action sequences, and given Christopher Nolan's notorious eye for detail and for creating spectacle, you'd think that he would have only hired the very best fight choreographers and stuntmen. But thanks to the sheer scale of one of the climactic battles in the trilogy Ender, Nolan clearly had to ask extras to fill in for the stuntmen, and some of them seem to have taken measures to make sure that they didn't actually get harmed at all. Like this guy who made sure he didn't hurt any of his fellow background artists by simply punching the air. <laughs> Ooh, unless it's actually a cameo of Lloyd Venn tricks or the gentleman ghost probably not though and that's our list <laughs> any other extras who shot for the moon but ended up in negative space well let me know about them in the comments section below and why not swing by whatculture.com for more news and articles like this every goddamn day as always i've been jules you've been awesome and i'll speak to you soon Ah, oh, what a great video, man. Oh, that was good. sort of strong attention to detail these guys have there. Yes. Uh, there are some of those I'm like, I would have never noticed that. Like See, the Gladiator one? Yeah. yeah I would have never seen that his head into the camera. <laughs> I would have never paid attention to that. Like, it makes me wonder, how do they do the research for this topic? They just watch a bunch of movies and just keep looking in the background, or are they going off the top of their head of things that they actually noticed? See, the thing That's is, crazy. now that I've seen this video, I'm going to be watching the backgrounds of things <laughs> so much harder. Yeah, <laughs> you know, just, like, yeah. Looking for things out of place with the extras and stuff like that. Those were long days milling around on set, you know, in costume yeah. doing not much. <laughs> it makes sense to me that extras might sometimes do that, because a lot of times extras are people who actually want to be yeah, legit yes. actors, <laughs> and yeah. so they're just trying to get their face in the shot so they can be like, look, I'm there. You know, I was a featured extra in Aquila and the Bee. Really? It was right after my famous debut on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia as kid number two. <laughs> what is he, like 40? That was my line. Dude, I feel like I just watched a part of that episode. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. said that just now. It was crazy. And Aquila and the Bee, at the spelling bee, I'm sitting right next to Aquila. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Have you seen Aquila and the Bee? Dude, um, did uh, you don't actually... worry, I'll have you open. <laughs> did, you, did, you, did you do something crazy? Did you like make sure you got your mug in there? I'm pretty sure you do see me a few times, yeah. actually. Watch Aquila right. and the Bee, you'll spot me. I'm right next to Aquila the entire time. And the Bee. I gotta know, she came on at me so hard. Oh, totally. I mean, look at you, who wouldn't? Well, she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> the first one they pointed out with Return of the Jedi, that was more like a stuntman, though. I wouldn't call it an extra. They wouldn't have an extra just do something. Just like, yeah. That's a pretty big thing for an extra to be doing right there, to be kicked off and falling off a platform. That's definitely a stuntman. Bad choice of which take that's to use. That's a bad angle, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because it's very obvious the guy's not being kicked. Planet of the Apes would <laughs> crack me up, though. The Planet of the... Yeah, see, the thing is, the first one, the, the ape that's like flinching and stuff, I was like, okay, maybe that was just an actual choice. But the second one, yeah, yeah, yeah she's like, she just doesn't, doesn't care. care. <laughs> it's hot outside. You have us in this makeup right now. <laughs> Everybody yeah. in the foreground's really going. Yeah. At it. I'll be back. <laughs> no, they won't notice me doing this. I made my 200 bucks for the day. <laughs> the Jurassic Park one, that was pretty good. Yeah, that's that is an extra trying to give more to the scene. <laughs> I actually, I I like that moment because that moment just makes sense. You know, it's it like does yeah, make sense. if this dude just like walked away from the car with the door open, I would be like, close the door. <laughs> for all we know, that could have been a real thing. That yeah. could have been like a real direction Spielberg gave him to do uh, to yeah. like make it work better because he is just walking away and he is yeah. getting annoyed and. Spielberg Spielberg likes to do those things where he likes to shoot in the master so the audience can see everything that's going on and you decide what to pay attention to. Or I'm just reading into this way too much and that was just an extra trying to shine a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about that gesture though. Was just yeah, like, the gesture was weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just seems so unnatural. <laughs> it's a weird... It's like, I get what he meant, but yeah, I don't know what the... Uh, yeah, that looked very... Your arms stop working halfway through? Very unnatural. The million dollar baby guy. I could kind of believe that, but he is the only one in the crowd who is He's just like way too jacked up. Jumping up and down yeah. in excitement. It's one thing to try to get your face in the shot. It's one thing to really try to stand out and be noticed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> well, you know, it's a boxing match. Maybe you just had a few too many. You know, you're just like pounding brewskis yeah. while he's watching the matches. And he's just like, yeah, don't break your neck. I feel like he probably came up with a lot of backstory for that character. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Created the entire world of that character. <laughs> yeah. This is this guy's thing. Right? Yeah. This is the only thing that gives him meaning. And he's going to bring after, the excitement. After a life of trouble, he found boxing and just everything. Yeah, great. exactly. <laughs> and the oh. Batman one, there was actually a second one they didn't mention. Which one? Uh, in the beginning where there was a Catwoman and Batman, when they were fighting, a guy just falls over. Oh, I remember <laughs> that! I remember that, another video. Like, they showed it on here, they didn't say anything. Well, this it. video is called 10 More Truly Terrible Extras, yeah. so it might, they might, might have, have been put the first, in the one, first yeah. one. But in this one, dude, he is punching dead air, that's yeah, for he, sure. <laughs> yeah. He, like, winds up, too, and he's like, <laughs> yeah. like, what are you punching? You're not even in front of a guy pretending to punch a dude. Being an extra on set's so boring. You ever done it? No. Have you done it, John? Like, not, uh, not lately, but I have in the past. I think we might have to go. John and I are considering going back to it. When Maybe I moved cool? here, I was actually thinking about trying to become an extra and just trying to get my foot into the door of the movie industry. There are people who make a good living off of it. Yeah. But they also segregate the crap out of you on set. Well, I'm good looking, so I'll fucking have fun. You know what? You said that with confidence and dead into my eyes. You will. You will. You will. Your first set, you're like, the AD is going to walk up to you and be like, hey, can you come here for a minute? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Come over here. I actually want you to be a lead right now. Yeah. yeah. We, we can't get you know, somebody or other on set, so uh, you, you want to jump up? Can you memorize these lines? <laughs> you just you just got to read these off, and I mean, we'll have a cue card, too, so you won't, don't worry. I can see that happening with you, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like if I were to tell someone I'm really good looking, I couldn't look them in the eyes. Like, watch. <laughs> I'm really good looking. You gotta have that confidence, man. Yeah, Alright, okay, take two. Girl, girls love confidence. Just say it. Say it. Say it. You're really good looking. <laughs> <laughs> Before this video is done, Kent McKnight. Kent McKnight! We don't have a photo of this guy on Patreon. It's like, man, what do I go off of here? Other than the fact that his name's Kent McKnight. Hey, Holy man. crap, this guy, that is not your real name. Are this you guy clearly loves Superman and Batman. <laughs> and he made a name to kind of disguise it a little bit. Well, maybe Kent is like a 1940s private eye. Maybe. <laughs> or he... Love Superman. <laughs> or maybe he loves Superman <laughs> like, and Batman. And this will yep. be a subtle reference to it right here. That last um, name's actually pretty badass. It is a yeah. it's a it is a cool name. It's cooler than my first email, Wayne Grayson at Yahoo.com. Huh. Huh. Do you get it? Do you get it? It's oh, yeah. Wayne Gretzky and Dick Grayson. Yeah, 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 there you go. See, I know the meaning of my email. You miss a thousand yeah. percent of the criminals you don't bust. But Ken McKnight, <laughs> thanks for being a part of our Patreon, my friend. Thanks, man. You do have a really sexy name, and I'm sure you have a sexy personality. If there's one thing I've learned from Turpening being here, it is that all the people on Patreon are sexy. It's a requirement. I, it is a requirement. We don't let you <laughs> pledge unless you are actually uh, legally sexy. When we do the next Google Hangout, I'll send you a card that says a uh, sexy... Ooh. Yeah, yeah, with like that's, a certification. That's our, that's our personal uh, sexy Patreon card. And actually, <laughs> when you join, you do get yeah about you know ten to fifteen percent sexier, you know, just yes. just as a free byproduct. So. I just took a photo of you. <laughs> it would have been, it would have been <laughs> slightly funnier if the sound was on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll include it in an iMovie. Yeah. Edit it. We'll edit that in. Some, yeah, really noticeable. <laughs> <laughs> Edit it in, but leave the part where we talk about it so everyone's like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to The Real Reject. Subscribe to What Culture. Click notification bell. Dat John Humphrey, Twitter and Instagram. Terp Smith on Instagram. Patreon is a real website. What do you know? Bye. <laughs>